Cross-site scripting is one of the most common attacks that you will find in the wild. Whether you are doing work as a pen tester or just doing bug bounty, cross-site scripting happens when you're able to embed JavaScript in a web application and JavaScript is client-side code. Now when you think client-side code, you might think, hey, not a big deal, you can't get a reverse shell with it, but it is a big deal. Because if I can execute JavaScript in your browser, I can attack you and I can attack any user of your application using JavaScript. Matter of fact, if we look at the OWASP top 10, I'll share my screen here on the OWASP top 10, the top 10 web application security risks for 2021, you can see that number one on this list when 2017 was injection. And then in 2021, it just moved down a few spots to spot number three for injection. And injection is 94% of the applications were tested for some form of injection and the 33 CWEs mapped in this category have the second most occurrences in applications. Cross-site scripting is now part of the category in this edition. And to show you this in the real world, why this is important to understand and how to exploit, here are some CVEs that I have found. So you can see Tyler Ramsby, that's me. I publish these, but these are eight CVEs or zero days. And this is an entire write-up on how I was able to use cross-site scripting and a messaging feature to elevate my privileges in an application to an administrator, then run another application on the back end and get full file read access on a real application as the root user. So this is showcasing the impact of cross-site scripting. In other words, this is a very real vulnerability. And if you want to be a pen tester, be good at bug bounty, this is a good vulnerability to understand. So in this video, I'm going to teach you how to detect blind cross-site scripting. So when you can't actually see the results of the payload, how to detect blind cross-site scripting and how to exploit it specifically to steal a session cookie of the victim user and then authenticate to an application as them. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and dive into this. Now I'm going to showcase an aspect of this K2 room on Try Hack Me. So I want to give a shout out to Adrian3689, actually a Try Hack Me staff member, really awesome person who made the K2 room. I have a detailed walkthrough in every machine on this room on my channel, but this one I just want to show you the cross-site scripting, how we can detect it, and how we can exploit it. So here is our application. You can see we logged in, we made an account, and we have a ticket system. And it says, hello, please submit your ticket. So I'll say, hello, I lost my password. Description, I'm a noob. Help please. And if we hit, we'll, we'll go ahead and capture this Kaido real quick. And if we hit submit on this, we'll send this over to replay. See if I can zoom in for you guys a little bit and we will hit send. Now on the response, it says ticket submitted successfully. It will be reviewed shortly. So we know that there is another person, since this is a CTF, it's really likely a headless browser, but there is another person or a headless browser looking over the application. And if we're able to embed JavaScript, we might be able to exploit them and steal a session cookie. Now we can see when we look at our own session right here, there's a cookie set for our user and it is a session cookie. Now, one thing you want to check when it comes to cookies or a sensitive cookie like a session cookie is see if the HTTP only flag is on. If that flag is on, that means that JavaScript cannot access a cookie and you can't actually steal the user's cookie. So let's first check that. Let's see if it would even be possible in the first place to steal the cookie. So let's check the cookie settings of that session cookie. In Chrome, we can do that going up here. We'll go to more tools, developer tools, and we have actually have it right here. So if we go to application, cookies right here, here is our session cookie and we wanna see what flags are set for it. And you can see the HTTP only flag is not set and neither is a secure flag, which means it can be transferred on non uh, secure networks without SSL or TLS. So that's a bad deal. And I do see this in the real world with sensitive cookies that they do not have the HTTP only flag set, which means if really when I get cross site scripting, I can steal that flag. Now I do pen testing for a living and I would say at least once a month, if not more, I discover cross site scripting on real web applications while I'm doing pen testing. So this is not a theoretical exploit. This is something you will encounter in the real world. So we can verify it does not have the HTTP only flag. So if we can exploit this, we might be Able to steal a session cookie. Now, first we need to figure out, hey, we don't see anything reflected here. So how do we figure out if it's vulnerable to cross-site scripting and if a user is looking at it? Well, first let's go ahead and start a Python web server. We can do Python 3 slash M 
It should be server 80. This is gonna set up a basic web server on port 80. So if we get any hits back to us, we know that it works successfully. And we have two fields that we can fuzz, a title and a description. And we can do a script that will just reach out to us and ping us if our victim user opens it. And we can do it this way. We'll do our script tags here, and we wanna specify a source, and our source is gonna be us. You can see my IP up there. So my source is gonna be HTTP 10.13. 46.224, and we can just call this the title.js. So we know that, hey, if this is the one that triggers, we know it came from the title, and we're gonna go ahead and close out our script like so. And we're gonna do a very similar thing in the description. We can close this out, grab this, and we will just copy this over to the description right here. But instead of title, we'll change this to description. So we know if this one gets triggered, it was in the description field or it was in the title field. Now we do have to URL encode this and in Kaido, we can just right click, convert, replace, URL encode, and same thing right here. We will right click, URL encode, like so, and we will click send. Now, it submitted successfully, just sent the payload over to our victim. And if we look over at our Python web server right here, our hope is that we are able to get a hit on our Python web server and we're able to see that the, the payload went through. And I am just gonna double check. Let's see if I made any mistakes in here because I often do. We have script, source, um, specifying our source. And you know what? I actually made a mistake. So this is not going to work. I made a new mistake by not putting um, parentheses around here and we'll have to do that to both of those so let's go ahead and right click right here URL decode and let's add in our parentheses around our source and I think that's my only syntax error there's I'm sure I made another error and it's probably not gonna work again but <laughs> let's give it a shot and see if it works so where URL encode that again grab this one and we will replace URL and code. So we have title, description, and we will click send. Ticket submitted successfully, it will be reviewed shortly. And there you go. We can see our victim actually did hit it because you can see our IP is 10.13.46.224 and we have an IP of 10.10.148.227 clicking on this ticket and it's triggering from the description.js field. So that tells us the title is not vulnerable to cross-site scripting, but the description is vulnerable to cross-site scripting. So good information for us to use. Now, the process for stealing a session cookie is somewhat complex. You have to set up a various JS file, set up a PHP, web server but here's the thing like probably you i always forget the syntax so when i forget the syntax of things i make scripts to do it for me so i don't forget and i will drop a link to the script in the video but if we go over to my github tenebrae 93 here's my github you can find all my scripts here i have this cross-site scripting cookie stealer and you can see what this is. It's a simple Python script that will set up a PHP server for stealing cookies and provide the payload that is needed. We'll go ahead and grab this code, copy it to our clipboard, and we will get clone that over to our machine. All right, and if we ls, we can cd into our cookie stealer. And if we Python 3 run it, do h, it says how to use it. So it says we need to just specify our cookie stealer and pass it our IP. It will create a web server directory containing the index.php and a script.js for capturing the cookies. It then starts a PHP server on port 80 to serve these files. So let's go ahead and give it a shot and see if I wrote the script correctly. So let's pass it RIP of 10.13.46.224 like so. Hit enter. And it set up our development server right there on port 80. It created our web server directory and it even gave us the payload that we needed. So let's go ahead and grab this payload. This time I can't possibly do a typo because it literally gives me the payload. <laughs> Make it as easy I can, as I can on myself. And there is our payload we wanna put into our description. Let's highlight this. Let's go ahead and URL encode it and click send. All right, ticket submitted successfully. Beautiful, and we will see what happens. Hopefully, something happens. <laughs> oh, hey, there we go. Just took a second, so you can see right there, it is sending me the session cookie 
of our victim user right there. We can even close that out. And if we go over to our web server, we can cat out our cookies.txt and we have the information there. It's gonna print you the victim IP as well as the cookie. Now the cookie is gonna be, at least on this machine, let me turn off our intercept and I'll show you how we can now use that cookie. There is admin.k2.thm that we need to log into. But what we wanna do is use the cookie editor. Now this is actually an extension. If you type in cookie editor extension, you can add this to either Chromium or Firefox. Either one works, you just go to it and install it. But I have it installed right here. So let's go to our cookie editor extension right here. You can actually see my cookie from when I did this before, but we'll delete that, we'll start from scratch. And all we need is the cookie information. So it's called the session and it gives us the cookie. So let's go ahead and copy our session right there. Go back over to Chromium, go back over to our cookie editor, and let's add a little cookie right here called session with this value. We'll paste that in so it copies our cookie in. We'll go to dashboard, and we have just compromised the admin user, and we have access to the dashboard by using their session cookie that we were able to steal with blind cross-site scripting, setting up our PHP server, and I made a little script that makes this a lot easier for you, so it auto magically does everything for you. So hey, hopefully you found this helpful. If you have any questions about what I just did, maybe something was confusing or unclear, believe it or not, I do read all the comments on my YouTube channel, so drop a comment to this video with your question or some clarification that you need, and I will do my best to respond to you and get back to you. But hey, thank you for watching. Hopefully you found this helpful, and I will see you in the next one.